Good morning, everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, we're back out here to farm all cub again, getting ready to go and lay our corn by. I don't know that I've ever laid corn by this early in the year yet. Uh, usually it's a lot later, but for this year, for some reason, the... Uh, life on the farm. For some reason, Everything's earlier this year for us. There's a few things I want to talk about. One, I had a uh, one of our subscribers made a comment to me. He said, Danny, you got this in the wrong place. I had it on the bottom, and they said it needs supposed to be on the top. Well, I went and looked at all the drawings and everything I could find. I couldn't find anything with it on there. But I took their advice, and I actually moved it up here, and I do believe it's going to work better up there because I... Common sense kicks in as it's rolling. It should go under something and then over something. I had it kind of pushing it away from the sprocket down there, and it was making it kind of jump and click a little bit. So this probably will work out a lot better. Thank you for that information. I had to change the spring out. This spring's still a little too strong. Uh, it's got a pretty good bit of tension. This thing is tight. Uh, I'm going to have to get a little bit longer spring to go on it, but for today, I think this one will be just fine. So I opted to switch over. Uh, another subscriber told me that they make a long tube and a short tube for these things. The, the short one goes for the fertilizer, and the long tube goes back here for the planter. Well, I only had two long tubes, and I had bought this short one earlier and got aggravated because I couldn't figure out what I was going to use it for. Now I know. I can use it for fertilizer. It wouldn't work for seeds because the seeds would hang up in the ribs in it. I've got this thing zip-tied to a short tool bar that I stuck in here. I took the straight bar out from across the front because the corn's too tall now. I put this little short tool bar in there. And uh, JT West has a YouTube channel. Uh, I watch JT all the time. And uh, I saw that where he uh, tied his fertilizer distributor pipe just to a bar up under his tractor ahead of his plows rather than trying to put that foot down there. Well, now that I got to thinking about it, that's probably not a bad idea because here I can see the fertilizer falling out the tube and it lets me know how much fertilizer is going on the ground and you know how it's all working out. Well, I took the half shovels off and I put the disc killers on here because I'm going to be bedding my corn up for its final time and I don't know, you know, if I've got them angled right. I don't know if they're set right where they're at. How, you know, I mean, it's one of those things that I don't... It's a speed thing versus a lot of different... <laughs> you just have to work at it, that's all I can say. Well, we're going to be putting out today... I normally put out ammonium nitrate when it's 8 inches tall and when it's 12 inches tall. I normally put ammonium sulfate out to my Danny corn when it's 8 inches tall and then again when it's 12 inches tall. Well, I did put it out when it was 8 inches tall. But guys... There's so much going on around here, and the weather, that stuff just jumped overnight. I put that nitrogen to it when it was 8 inches tall, and it hadn't even been a week, and it's already way over 12 inches tall. I mean, it's unreal at the rate that it's growing. So, rather than put the ammonium sulfate out to it again, just that, because ammonium sulfate is actually gone in like 20 days, it's over. I'm going to be putting triple 13 because... This corn, I want it to keep on rolling. You know, I want it to keep on maturing and growing. So I'm going to be putting the triple 13 to it so that it gets 13% nitrogen, you know, and then 13% uh, NPK. I, I just want it all the way across the board. I want the 13% across all of it so that the corn has something to feed on other than just the 30, 20 to 30 days of nitrogen that it's going to have there. So we got to run over to the other shop and we got to get the uh, fertilizer put in here. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to start fertilizing and laying corn by. I ordered a replacement part to go on my cub tractor right here. The one that was on here had been broken, and the people had just remanufactured a piece of flat plate steel in here. And this had been broken off, and they re-welded all this stuff up. And it had all kind of slack in it everywhere and all. And, and I wondered why my back feet never would pick up high enough. They was always just right on the ground. Well... When I ordered this other part, I ordered new bushings and all to go in it and all, and I mounted it back on here and put this thing together. Let me tell you something. I realized that the other one had been put together wrong. Everything 
about it was wrong. So uh, now that I have everything back here, supposedly and hopefully, like it goes, um, we're going to see. The only thing I'm not sure about, maybe some of you subscribers can help me out with this. I could not find that, find if this bar turns to the bottom or if it was to the top. I put it to the top so that I could get some clearance back here. But the only thing I don't know is that when I go out to plow in the garden, is it going to let it down where my rear feet actually touch the ground? That's what I don't know yet because I haven't used it yet. Um, so we're going to go. I did get it leveled in across here and everything. I actually have a new piece right here bought to go on the tractor because this one had been broken and re-welded in a couple of places here. So I ordered a new one of them. I got it. I just got to get it painted and everything uh, before I put it all on here. So we're going to take this thing out and I'm going to see if I've got this what looked to be right for me. Because if I turned it over the other way, my feet wouldn't even lift up off the ground hardly. So we're going to take it out. And uh, another thing I found out, one of my uh, number 16 uh, plow shanks here, I kept trying to adjust it where the foot would sit down flatter. Somebody had come in and took a welder, and they had welded this thing right here, flat up against all that in there. This is where I was having my problem, my number 16 right here. Somebody welded the back side of it up, and I kept turning this nut up here, trying to get this thing to adjust in and out like that and all, and it wouldn't, and I got to looking, and somebody had welded it. So I don't know why they welded it. But I decided, so I, that I would still not throw it away, but I put my metal splitter plow on it. Because see, they even welded, they had the plow welded to it, everything. I finally got the plow off of it. So be cautious of these things when you go out to buy these things. I never looked at that. I was like, well, it's a number 16. I bought it at a flea market, you know. Mm -hmm. People do some weird things out there. There's another thing here I want to talk about, this shelf system that I built in here. Uh, I was mm -hmm. noticing uh, on JT's YouTube channel, he had a set of shelves in his shed, and I looked at how he had them done. I really liked them because on this one here, I have all my nuts, bolts, washers, all that kind of stuff laid out here in sizes and stuff, carriage bolts. I got all my plows, my sweeps, my half shovels, all the rest of my sweeps, my bull tongs, my chisel plows. I mean, I got all this stuff laid out here. I uh, got, got a new set of brakes for my tractor. I just don't have them on there yet. Here's that new part I was telling y'all about that goes under the back of my tractor. I got that one. I got a new set of gaskets because I'm going to change the gaskets out on the planetary system on the back of it. And underneath it here, I've got another setup here. This is where I've got my sickle bar mower parts under here. I got them right here. And then I got the sickle bar actually on a homemade pallet system I made here. I can roll this thing around in here without having to do any kind of lifting and all that kind of stuff on it. Or if I need to bring my forks in, I can bring the forks under it, pick it up on my other tractor and take it out and move it. Um, I've got this set up that way so that it makes it a lot more convenient for me to do anything. Now the top up here, I don't have anything in the top of this one yet, but I'm sure before it's over with, I'll have farm all parts. It'll fit right in there just perfect. Now on the bottom here, I've got all my, my plows all laid out here. I figure if I buy enough of them number 16 shanks here, I can just put my half shovels on some, my half sweeps on them, my middle splitter on them. Uh, and I got a set on the tractor. I don't have to worry about them. I got everything laid out. I've got different length toolbars. When I find them, I just go purchase them, all different lengths. I've got the toolbar that's got the crook in it that goes underneath there. I've got two straight toolbars. I've got the layoff sweeps. I've got the uh, different types of clevis systems that goes under it there for planters and all that stuff. I got my drawbar system. I finally got a drawbar. I've got two of these fertilized feet that goes under the bottom of it. And then up here I've got my uh, my pulley system that goes on the back of the cub that's going to run the grain mill when we get our grist mill from uh, Mr. Justin. And then I have other sets of fertilized distributor and planter parts up here to... I actually have two or three sets of everything now. So I have spares for everything. This is my uh, planter. And then we've got our... We've got all of our seed plates right here. We've got our attachments. It hooks the planter to the tractor. I gotta get all this cleaned up and get it painted. 
We've got our seed and fertilized tubes back here. I mean, we have all this. And guys, this foot right here, this foot goes on a one, from what I'm able to find out, goes on a 170 combination planter. So I don't need it. If any of you guys out there have a 170 combination planter and you're looking for a foot that's in mint condition, it has no wear on it whatsoever, uh, contact me and we'll work out something about uh, getting it to you. And I have two sets of, these are, it says coal on it right there, C-O-L-E. Uh, I found these. And both of these have are for a coal planter, it says. Uh, if y'all have a coal planter and you need those, get in contact with me. We'll work out some kind of deal. And then, of course, I have the, uh, the seed cover that goes with the planter system I have over there on the other side of the shop. That covers up the seeds before the wheel mashes it down. Of course, on the top shelf up here, I put stuff that I don't use very often. This is all my... Uh, replacement parts and stuff in this box right here i have you know uh my sickle bar more rivets and stuff like that there and then i have all the oils for changing the oil in the motor i've got gear oil on the other side up there so i keep all my oils and stuff like that up there and then i have other boxes of carburetor i have an extra carburetor for my tractor just different boxes of different things are stuck off up here out of sight guys this shelving system was an awesome design by JT. Uh, go check out Joey and them over there on their channel, JT West. Uh, I watch him all the time. Uh, he's really into the farm all tractors, and that's I'm into the farm all tractors, and I can appreciate him. He seems like a good Christian man. Uh, I would highly recommend his channel. So if y'all could go over and check him out, and you go over there, tell him Deep South sent you. Uh, of course, he'll probably see this video anyway because I think he watches ours. But um, I just want to give him the recognition for the design of these shelf systems up here because they've worked out really well for me here in our barn. We're going to make sure we're in neutral. Flip our... I put a toggle switch on mine. A lot of people have a pull button, but I put a heavy-duty toggle switch. Make sure my lift is all the way up. Make sure I'm just a little bit above idle here. We're going to pull the choke out, and then we're going to... choking it because it's kind of cold nature. That's them old, old timey vehicles and tractors for you.
guys, one thing, somebody will find this out and somebody will figure this out. I did not take the fertilizer tube off to wash it out. It's all made out of rubber. It's not going to rust. I did clean up under it and wash around on it there, but I left it stuck in there because it's not like the other ones. Fertilizer is not going to hurt the rubber. Um, so it'll be there for next time when I get ready to use it. Um, so that's, for those of you who's going to catch that, that's why I didn't do it. So that's it for the corn, guys. Um, now, we may come back once it gets up. I have done this. It depends on how the weather's going. We may come back when the corn gets to be about three or four feet tall and right ahead of a little rainstorm that's going to come through, as long as, we, as long as it's not saying it's going to be bad, but just a good rain, I may come back and walk through the corn when it's up about five foot, something like that, four or five foot, and pour some ammonia nitrate, about ammonia sulfate, about this far out from the corn, down through the rows, and let the rain kind of wash it in to give it that last little bit of a boost that it'll need. Um, but we'll just see how it goes. It's coming along really good. It's, I was noticing a while ago, it's already about 16 inches tall because it's taller than the bottom of the tractor is because it was leaning it over. So that lets me know that uh, it's growing really fast. But that's Danny corn for you. Danny corn is like magic. That stuff just grows. And I mean, if you watched our previous videos back years ago when I grew it, some of it gets as big as your arm is in here and 16 feet tall and got big old ears on it that long. I mean, so we'll wait and see how the weather does this year and whether we get to harvest any because that's the thing about corn. You never know if you're going to harvest it because of weather and animals. Well, it's always a pleasure to put the farm all cub back under the farm all barn. Thank y'all for staying with us and watching us as we try to lay by the corn. Because a lot of people on one of my previous videos said, I don't know what it means to lay by the corn. So what I just done was what in the South we call laying the corn by. Now, the old timers, when they laid it by, they sowed field peas in with it. And the field peas would run up the corn stalks and make peas. And when they picked the corn by hand back then, they didn't do it with equipment. They'd go through and pull the corn off by hand. Then they'd turn the cows into the pastures later in the fall, and they'd feed off of the peas and the corn stalks and different things like that. But, guys, we're not going to be doing that, so we're not planting any peas with our corn. I know that's a tradition in the South, but we don't do it. So, one thing I was sad about this year, I had the above-ground sweet potatoes winter squash ready to go at the ends of the corn rows and they outgrew the corn. So I've had to move them to another location and not doing too good, but we're going to try to get some fertilizer in there on them and see if we can't get them boosted up a little bit and see if we can't make them start jumping. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>